Hello and welcome to macroeconomics. Macroeconomics is generally thought of as being concerned with studying two phenomena. One is the phenomenon of long-run economic growth. Two is the phenomenon of the business cycle. One concerns long-term trends in output per capita and perhaps other macroeconomic variables. And the other concerns short-term fluctuations around that trend in GDP per capita and other macroeconomic variables. So what's key about both these phenomena, which sets macroeconomics apart from other fields of economics to some extent, is the fact that both of these are inherently dynamic phenomena. They're both about things changing over time. As a result, in this class, we will start by looking at some powerful mathematical techniques that are useful for understanding how things turn, change over time. Now, right from the beginning, we have to think about what do we mean by time, or how are we going to model time. It turns out that there are two ways to think about time. One is of time as being a continuous flow, which is more or less the way we experience time. And the, in that case, time would be a continuous variable drawn from the set of real numbers. An alternative, however, is to think of time as occurring in discrete jumps. So then we would talk about things that happen on a particular date, and then the following date, let's say today versus tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, or one month to the next, one quarter to the next, one year to the next. In that case, we're thinking of things in terms of discrete time. In macroeconomics, we'll very often find ourselves talking about time as being something that occurs in discrete steps. Why do we do this? Well, there's a very good reason. The reason is because the data that we're going to talk about is, of course, measured in discrete steps. It is not possible to have continuous economic data on anything. There have to be a sequence of snapshots. And as a result, since we want our models to be able to speak with this data, and in some cases, we'll even want to compute a version of our model to see if the simulated data that it generates resemble the real world data. As a result, we'll want discrete time models, models where time moves in jumps. Now, you could think of an alternative, which would be to have a model where things move continuously, and you simply measure it at sna certain snapshots, uh, measure it at certain intervals, sorry. And that might be challenging, but I just put it out there as a potential idea. Uh, the mathematical techniques that we need to think about a uh, model with discrete time are known broadly under the umbrella of dynamic programming. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn a bit about dynamic programming, first about how you might use it, and then we'll talk about some of the real and functional analytical foundations that allow us to do dynamic programming. After that, we'll apply dynamic programming techniques to think about some problems in growth and eventually maybe the business cycle. If we have time, however, we will maybe have a conversation about the use of continuous time models because those are also um, useful in certain contexts. In particular, if there is any date that an agent is choosing um, in order for a particular action, in discrete time, it's, there's going to be no sort of differential condition that pins down exactly what that date is. Whereas in continuous time, there might be. That means that in certain contexts, continuous time models are very useful. And for that, we will need to learn a different set of techniques called optimal control. And hopefully we'll have time to get to that towards the end. In between, we'll also look at some areas of research that don't necessarily show up in any standard first year PhD macroeconomics class, but there are things that I know about. And I think that it's always good for students to go in depth into some topic or another that fits the professor's expertise. All right, so now let me continue by giving you an example of a paper that used dynamic programming techniques and that made a big splash. 
This paper is called Time to Build and Aggregate Fluctuations by Kidlin and Prescott. And what they did was the following. This should give you an idea of how it is that macroeconomists conduct their research these days. In fact, a lot of what we do, or at least some of what we do, grew out of what was done in this paper. It was known back then that it's very hard to get economic growth in any sort of reasonable model without the ultimate source of this growth being long-term improvements in productivity, sustained improvements in productivity. It's very difficult to get economic growth in the model without that. So Kidlin and Prescott thought, well, um, we have changes in productivity accounting for the law pattern of long-term growth that we observe. Could it be that fluctuations in productivity actually account for the business cycle, for fluctuations in output per capita over time? If you could do that, if you could account for um, the business cycle on more or less the same basis that you can account for economic growth, then we would have a unified model of macroeconomics, sort of along the lines of unifying quantum mechanics with gravitation. So it would have been a big success to show that. And that's what they did. First, they wrote down, again, a discrete time model um, where things change, in their case, I think, quarter to quarter. And in this model, there were going to be productivity shocks as well as trends in long run growth. And what they did then is they found values of all the parameters of this model that arguably were consistent with the data. And then they put this on their computers and they simulated it many times to see what the business cycle looked like in their simulated economy. And they found to their surprise that the business cycle dynamics of this simulated economy were not too unreasonable. Of course, they didn't match the real world data perfectly, but they did a reasonable job of generating business cycles of roughly the correct magnitude in terms of how much does um, output per capita fluctuate from quarter to quarter. They did a reasonable job in terms of the correlations of different macroeconomic variables like labor, um, labor use, output, consumption, investment, and so on. So that paper was found to be so compelling that at a conference I went to a few years ago, the organizers actually decided to print the front page of that paper onto a t-shirt. So that's how big a splash this paper was able to make. So again, welcome to this macroeconomics class. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn a lot. And I hope that when you finish this class and you go on and do your research, whether in macroeconomics or in any other field where these dynamic techniques may be useful, that whatever you come up with is so compelling and so groundbreaking that other people decide that they want to put it on a t-shirt as well. Thank you.